behind the arc. Here's a three. Bang! There it is, number 11. Dante DiVincenzo with a new Nick record for most threes in a game. Dang, what's going on? This is JLS from Nick of Time Show here giving you that Knicks talk just in the Nick of Time. And if you didn't already know, the Knicks won again. They beat the Pistons 124 to 99. That's right. The Knicks once again held another team under 100 points. Clap it up for Knicks 90s defense reconnecting itself in 2000s, all right? Bojan gives you 13 points. McBride gives you 13 points, five rebounds and four assists. Jalen Brunson wakes up in the second half and gives you 28 points and six assists. Hartenstein had another good day, woke up, had a triple-double with, with uh, I'm saying Hart had a triple-double with 11 points, 10 assists and 10 rebounds. Hartenstein gave you six points, 10 rebounds and five assists. And Dante, had another inferno, had a career high, 40 points with five rebounds, and then had the nerve to make 11 threes, matching the Knicks franchise record, uh, record from Evan Fournier, and help the Knicks get to victory. So we celebrating. We busting those shots, because Dante, you did that. Really, you had 12 threes, but we not gonna, we not even gonna talk about that, but really you had 12 threes. But we taking that 11 threes and that franchise records to the books while Evan Fournier is in the building. So we gonna talk about it, man. We gonna talk about all the good, the bad, the ugly. Not really a lot of ugly to talk about, but we gonna talk about it anyway, all right? So let's get to it. First and foremost, I'm gonna introduce you to my guys first. It's the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the stats and the facts. Ryan G's in the building. Um, you could you could say pretty easy win for the Knicks tonight. I mean, come on, they're facing the Pistons. Pistons had like eight players out. Yeah. So the Knicks did what they had to do. They stood on business, smacked them, and got them guys out of there quick, fast, and in a hurry. Quick, fast, in a hurry. But listen, man, we can only play the teams that are in front of us and Listen, man, we've been missing half of our starting five our, for most of the year, all right? More than half of our starting five. There's been no sympathy for us. We're missing Julius Randle, missing OG Nobi, and others. And still, the Knicks find themselves in third... Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Fourth place in the East. Uh, so, I don't feel sorry for nobody because nobody feels sorry for us. So, it is what it is. But now, I'm going to introduce you to my other guy. I mean, the Latin assassin, Lee Escobedo. What's going on, man? Just a little light work. Detroit Pistons. <clears throat> Not sure what's more ass cheats. The Detroit Pistons roster, their coaching staff, or the front office and the organization. Luckily, in the tail end of the season, we got to play a really bad team. We'll allow some guys um, to get some some rhythm going. Guys like McBride and Dante DiVincenzo find their shot, continuing their streak. Um, unfortunately, the two Bodita bums, Bojan Bondanovic and Alec Burtz, weren't able to to show anything worth showing. So hopefully when everybody's back and healthy, those guys are regulate back to the bench. Uh, so the only thing more fun than us smacking up on Detroit is <laughs> all the memes going on about P. Diddy. So we're going uh, to have, we're gonna have uh, a fun time uh, to show. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 P. Diddy got the early bra. <laughs> Bro. Not an early bro. You got a lot of bros. <laughs> oh man. Damn, not a lot of bros. Hey yo. <laughs> a lot of bros. No diddy, Bruh. no diddy, no diddy. <laughs> oh, we started with violence today. Oh man. Started with night. violence today. But you know who else is start with violence today? Dante DiVincenzo is starting with violence today. You hear me talking about how the Knicks have elite role players on the squad. What's more elite than a role player who's getting paid how much per year? Is it, is it 12 million this year? 14 million next year? 10 million the 30? I don't know, but he's not making much. But we have a role player here who's breaking single season franchise records 
11 threes in his first year and dropping 40. Where? Where did that happen? Leon Rose, man, you gotta tip his hat to him. We have to tip his hat to him. He's grown. <laughs> We've got him exactly the right time. Grown as a role player, he's been able to, you can tell he's been training with Curry the way he's been shooting, the way he's been moving off the ball. He's also, lately, he's been getting to the paint. I've showed you the clean glass stats uh, the last game. I'll show you again. I'm sorry, going to the, I'll show you again. Clean the glass has Dante DiVincenzo as a three level scorer at this point. 40% from three, shooting 79th percentile in the mid range, 88th percentile in the long mid range, corner threes in the 85th percentile. He is dead eye shooter from all three levels. And we have this guy locked up. I know people were kind of upset that he was here. Um, but he is proven to be a godsend, not only a three-point shooter, but a kleptomaniac, uh, a guy who steals the ball, a guy who plays defense, a guy who he sometimes plays makes. He was a little unselfish, even though he, he could have shot the three a couple more times. When he came closer to, to getting that record in that third quarter, he passed the ball off. Um, it's I'd be pressed. It's going to be hard. It's funny. Shout out to... um. It was shout out to shout out to Terry because he said this on Twitter. And I've been thinking this too. Even if we have the chance to get an elite shooting guard here, because I know I know the talk has been Macau Bridges, but would you even want to disrupt the type of chemistry that we have right now with a guy like Dante DiVincenzo who can casually drop forty in the, in this Tom Thibodeau system? It, it's it's crazy. It's crazy right now. Like you might have to pause because you know the New York Knicks were used to going after the big names. And even if we're not going after the big, big names, Macau Bridges is still a name that people more know, know more than Dante DiVincenzo. But who's to say that Dante DiVincenzo won't be the name that people are going to know after this season? So it's just something to think about. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? What, what you what you thinking? Uh, I see Ryan shaking his head. Yes, I'm going to go with Ryan. No, I'm not saying that. Um, yeah, Dante had excellent game tonight. And I like the fact that now they are running more more screens, so now it's more so like he's catching and shooting off the screens, which I think is helping him to get open threes as well. And, you know the um the, the handoffs as well, and you know they're finding different ways to get him the ball so he can get open threes, and it definitely has um expanded his I guess shot selection when it comes to like you know getting open looks for threes and things of that nature. Since teams know that you know he's one of the snipers on the team, they try to. You know, play him close. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's sniper gang, thing. like everybody likes to say. Exactly, sniper gang, and yeah, he's definitely up this game. You know, especially going to the basket. I think before he came, before coming to the Knicks this season, he was he wasn't that he wasn't that known for finishing at the rim, and he's definitely improved in that area of his game as well. So yeah, with the Knicks, you can say that he developed into a three level shooter, and you know, it was just great. To, it, it was just great. He just had a great performance tonight. You know. Took the threes that were there, and then I, the, what I liked about his game too was the fact that even though he knew that he, even though he knew that the record was in hand, where you know he, where you know there was some situation where he could have shot the three or forced it up, he still played within the system and got you know other teammates involved, you know, passed the ball if he saw like someone had a better shot or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, overall, you know, Dante. He, uh, he's pretty much solidified. He pretty much solidified himself as the as the you know the two guard on the Knicks and yeah, it does beg it does you know question it like the way the team is set up at the moment. You do have to kind of look at the roster and be like, okay, like what are the what are the additions that the Knicks need to make or any possible additions that need that they need to make to better the roster and you might be you you might be shifting away from getting another starter to possibly just trying to solidify the bench because the starting unit has so much chemistry and they play well together and you have guys that emerged where you know they may have had smaller roles on the team before but then as the season went on whether it's due to injury or whether it's due to like players leaving and they're coming into the lineup getting more minutes now they've solidified themselves in those roles and now it's like Oh, maybe that, you know, that big star we we thought the Knicks needed or or maybe this position we thought the Knicks needed, maybe it's not needed anymore. Maybe it's 
it's just, you know, little pieces here and there that's going to, you know, solidify the bench or whatever the case may be. All right, chat. It's time to roll the tape. And remember <laughs> on this show, when I said Dante DiVincenzo has all-star potential, that I hopped on SNY and called him a generational shooter, I think we're seeing that come to fruition. Uh, the eye test doesn't lie. That Lee Estabito eye test, the Latin assassin. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. The kid has very similar pedigree to Jalen Brunson. I think he can be an all-star, and I think he will be, and he's going to be an all-star on that unbelievable value contract that Leon Rose snagged him on. He was the MVP of the Final Four tournament, dropped in 31 points in title game, and took his Delaware high school team to two state championships. So he's cut from the same winning cloth as Jalen Brunson, but that three ball, if this was 2005, I probably wouldn't argue for him being an all-star, maybe like a Michael Red, maybe a one-time all-star. But I think because of the the prominence of a three, he can be a one- to two- to three-time all-star here in New York. New York Knicks should no longer be star chasing. I don't care what they do with those draft picks. Keep this core together, go into the apron, and re-sign Mitch and OG, and let's go win this chip. You you know what, Lee? There's, there's, there's a few things that go into being an all-star. It's outside of talent. Uh, it's opportunity. You know what I mean? With no Julius Randle here, you're gonna he has more opportunity to get 30 point games. You've seen him get multiple 30 point games since Julius Randle is out. So no doubt there could be all-star potential in him. I'm not sure if he's gonna have the reign to do what he's doing right now with a Julius Randle in the lineup taking a lot of those shots. This shot die goes down a lot. So I'm not sure if he'll actually ever be an all-star in the Knicks uniform. Um, does he have all-star talent? Very possibly. I can definitely see it. I can definitely see him having an all-star type of talent if developed, if giving the a shot and, you know, giving just more reps to produce. Like, there's something there for sure. Um, will he reach it? I'm not sure. Um, but more importantly, too, like you said, do we need anybody else really? And I'm not sure that's, I'm not sure we should be looking at that too. Cause I, like I, if you guys probably already peeked at my, my little, my little uh, form here, my little, I'm looking over here at Mikhail Bridges. It's funny, yo, people are turning on Mikhail Bridges, man. They are turning, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Nets fans to call him mid Cal Bridges now. <laughs> <laughs> He's the second leader scorer on the own Nets team. Uh, and by the way, RIP to the Nets because their playing <laughs> hopes are falling. And now that their playing hopes are falling, at least they have draft picks to look forward to. Wait, no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> they could have had Jalen Green and four to five draft picks, but Sean Mark said no. No, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Executive of the year, Sean Mark's over there. But um Mikhail Bridges is taking a dip right now. And um He's the number two guy right now. He's the number two guy on, right now on the Nets. I know everybody, even me, was like, let's have Mikhail Bridges be here. I would love Mikhail Bridges in, in the big uniform, forming the the, the, villain, the new villain of the boys. Like, we, 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 you've all seen, we've seen the, you've seen the little memes and stuff. <laughs> we've seen Josh Hart after the Knicks beat the Nets. A brutal quote, <laughs> shout out to Kristen Winfield, who says, a brutal quote from Josh Hart on Mikhail Bridges, who is losing in Brooklyn as the Nova Knicks are playoff bound. It's like that SpongeBob meme when Squidward is looking out the window and he sees SpongeBob and Patrick having fun. Mikhail is Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that man. So, like comedy, like even the Mikhail, even if Mikhail, even if we dig in Mikhail, man. It'll be hard to it'll be hard to knock Dante off his square right now the way he's playing. That's all I'm saying. They might be like, hmm, the McCall off the bench. Like you might be talking about that. I don't know. McCall off the bench, and if OG is out, because OG will be out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe McCall and, and Dante. I don't know. Like that's the way I'm thinking. 
But it's, I don't know. What do you what you thinking? But I think based on the way the new CBA is structured, JLS, you've touched on it, where it's going to be harder to keep those high level role players on your team um, because of the limitations and in, in terms of uh, the salary cap. The Knits are in one of those rarefied spaces where they have guys locked in on long term deals moving forward. Where we have like a three to four year window where we can operate too deep at every position a 10, 12-man roster of high-level guys that play both ends of the floor, and we can compete for championships in that window. And I think we're the only team right now that has that capability, and we should maximize it, which is why I'm an advocate for moving away from the star chasing and re-sign these guys and getting to that, that first apron and utilize your depth as your strength. Because these guys have shown an opportunity. When it presents themselves, as you just mentioned, they take full advantage. IQ leaves, Deuce McBride steps in. Precious goes down. All of a sudden, Isaiah Hartenstein and Josh Hart are playing unbelievable ball. Mm-hmm. But I love that rotation of OG to Hart. It's it, it's magical, and I think that we need to take advantage for the first time in my fandom of having an upper hand roster building wise. We should ride this wave because when it's teams like the Suns, the Clippers, the Mavs, teams that are built around two or three high level stars, their role players are what's holding them back from either be a really competent defensive team or a really competent offensive team. Depth is so important in today's modern NBA. Milwaukee had it when they won a championship. Denver had it when they won a championship. And I think that we need to use it to that advantage and keep our guys in tow because very few teams have a level of continuity we have from the Villanova days all the way to the fact that Julius Randle and Mitch have been here for a while. Like that's crucial, and we should ride that. Yeah. The thing is, though, Lee, we, we have like two years. We don't even have three years because – because Brunson, uh, we're going to have to give Monk Brunson his money in two seasons. So we don't even have four seasons. So any move we get, we got to make within next season and the season after that. And we got to roll with that team. So that's why that's why even these injuries and stuff is, is, is important for our guys to get back and make a real push to show our front office what we really have. Because... We want to. You want to leave that impression on the front office that that team is here already. You don't have to go out, really star chasing. And for that to happen, they have to perform and they have to be healthy to do that. So what I mean by that though is that the role players are here for four years. Mm-hmm. I know we have to pay Brunson and Randall eventually that match the contract extension. I even think both of them will need a discount to stay honestly. But even Chinzo and McBride, uh, Mitchell Robinson, those oh, guys. Yeah, are yeah, yeah. A long-term deal. I'm just saying we don't have to worry about re-signing them or going out and trying to find that role. Got you, got you. Have that role here for the long time. After the summer, hopefully, Precious, iHeart, and OG join that list. Yeah. For, for me, I'm looking for an OG light next season, if I could, and maybe a combo guard, if anything. Like, I know the, I know, I know the Knicks will be looking for stars or whatever, but I'm looking for an OG light. Because you know, you just don't know how many games OG OG's OG's out every year. So you want to have somebody who can also can kind of do what he does, maybe not as high as level as he can, but somebody who can like check taller guards or check taller wings, which not easy to find. <laughs> but um, but that and a combo guard to me might be the way to go. Good thing we have two picks in this upcoming draft. Yeah, good thing. We'll see if we actually use them. <laughs> we'll see who we actually I, 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 I agree with you. I think those are two roles that we do need, and I think we should use a draft to do that. We got Walt Perrin. Let's utilize him. We got Tom Thibodeau. Let's utilize him. Yeah. 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 But tremendous game from Dante, man. 11 threes. First season. First season as a Nick. I don't know, though. This front office is smart. And did you see the nerve? The nerve of Evan Fournier trying to play defense. This is mad hard to keep his record intact. <laughs> like, oh, like the nerve of this guy. Like, I never ever seen him play defense so hard in my entire life. <laughs> he, 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 he fought over screens and rescreens. Have you ever seen Evan fight over screens and rescreens? No. It's crazy. I mean, it's kind of like what Ebony said in our chat. She was like, if he played defense like that on the Knicks, he would still he would still be with the Knicks right now. Yeah, be starting. No need to get a boy on the Bogdanovic here. Fournier would have been a part of the rotation, but he ain't played defense, and that's why he's on Detroit right now. Yeah, he had a nerve. He's throwing alley oops, man. Bruh. <laughs> 
what's it? Out of you. I'm tired of you, man. But I'm, I'm glad that he got that record in front of Fournier. Yeah, you, you got to look at it this way, though. Look at my man's career for the last, like, few years. He couldn't buy any type of minutes when he was with the Knicks because of his lack of defense. And then my man gets traded to Detroit, and now he's just playing a bunch of meaningless basketball because Detroit's not going nowhere. They lose almost every game. So my man had to hold on to some semblance of his former glory days. And my man's glory days was with the Knicks that one year when he got those 200, I forgot the record, like 200 something mm -hmm. three pointers or whatever the case may be. And then this, and then, oh, oh wait, that's a different record. We're talking about the 10 three pointers that he hit in one game. So my man is trying to hold on to any type of semblance of like his glory days. And he was like, yo, I cannot let this man get my record. So my man has, so my man stepped into the plate. He was like, yo, if you want to break my record, you're going to have to earn it. We get that out of here, though. I, I understand the competitiveness, but yeah, if he played defense like that every game, he'd still be with the Knicks. We get that out of here, though. Dante was eight threes away from, from beating the, the record of all time three points made for a Nick. Yeah, he's yeah, getting he's out of here, too. So we getting all, we getting both of those out of here. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, big dog. You got nothing to worry about after this year. <laughs> You'll be number two, all right? Oh, man. And can we talk about elite role players? This is what I'm talking about, elite role players. We got role players getting triple doubles and breaking franchise records, man. That, Josh Hart. Josh Hart got a triple double again today. Again. He hit a three today. He hit a three. Did he did he miss like 17 straight threes and hit a three today? Yeah. And then once again, he's diving people up. The the team passing has been immaculate. 30 assists for these Knicks. The shit, the, 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 the ball movement has just been evolved since Randall's gone down. I can't I can't I can't say enough about it. But Josh Hart, Dante Di Vincenzo, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about elite role players, guys who do their role better than anybody else. And if he starts to shoot that three, man, it's a different, he's a different level. He's one of the best role players in the NBA. When he gets the D, when he gets that rebound and starts going downhill, it's almost impossible. It's almost an automatic assist every single time. I remember last year, he wouldn't even give up the ball when he went to the hole. <laughs> like, remember that? Remember? He would go, he'd be one on three. One on three. Now he's actually passing the ball, getting triple doubles. Look at Tibbs. Look at Tibbs, man. Doing the Lord's work. Shout out to Thibodeau and, and Josh Hart. Triple double for today. Yeah, this is why Josh Hart's one of my favorite players because he's the guy, he's like a Swiss Army life. He does everything well. He rebounds, he rebounds well. He he facilitates well. He drives to the basket, finishes at the rim. The only thing that's really missing from his game is a jump shot. And like I said, if he gets a jump shot, he, he's easily the best role player off the bench in the NBA. Easily. It's not it's not even a competition because of this because of the different things that he brings to the team every time he steps on the court. And tonight he proved it again. 11 points, 11, re, I think 14 rebounds, 10 assists. And the fact that he's 6'4 and he rebounds so well for his size is crazy to yeah. me. Yeah. Because because he could be in the paint and there's like big men in the paint, but but somehow, some way, he's able to find the ball. It's like the it's like he has like a magnetic like charge where it's like the ball just automatically just comes to him and he just takes the ball and then he starts a fast break. Mm -hmm. He's a one man fast break on top of that. Like he rebounds the ball, then it's a one man fast break. The team is running and the Knicks are able to get easy baskets off of that transition as well. That's why Josh Hart's one of my favorite players on this team because he does everything well. He gets a, he gets a jump, it's a wrap. There's a beautiful sequence that I think embodied everything that he brings to the team. When uh, first quarter, I think I hard game, but dribble handoff, he went around the left side, curled around the baseline, and then did a nice little dime pass to I heart and I heart sweet spot right there in front of the basket. And I heart knocked in that floater. Mm. I was like, damn, Josh Hart. And he was slotted in the power forward at that time, being able to, to carry the ball like a guard, facilitate like a point, like, there's nothing he can't do. And if I heart would have missed, he probably would have grabbed the offensive rebound too for us for a second mm -hmm. chance. Like that's that's how valuable he is. And you can see Josh Hart in the playoff time is going to have one of those big offensive rebounds that would go down in its history. 
And there's still some crazy stat that I saw a few weeks ago, the few days when OG was actually healthy about OG and Anobi and Josh Hart's defensive rating when playing together is by far the best two man defensive team in the NBA by wow. like a lot. By like not yeah. like by a, like a mile. I forgot the exact number. It was like 85, 85 points per some possessions. But it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. So Josh Hart, as much crap as he gets, he's been phenomenal for us. He just needs to hit that shot, man. Hit that shot. And I saw JJ Reddick. He was talking on the show and he was like, oh, I'm going to get you right. Uh, I'm going to get you right. You know, you, you can come to me in the summer. I'm going to help you out to get your three-point shooting right. You're a phenomenal shooter, JJ, but you were supposed to get Grimes right. And then we ended up trading him. So I don't know. <laughs> I hope you do better than when you was working with Grimes. Because like Grimes is, Grimes is still struggling a little, little bit. I mean, he has a knee injury. But I hope I hope you get Josh right for real, not Grimes right. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> who's passing the, the ball is, extremely well. The thing is, Grimes' jump shot's not broken, though. Like, the issue with Grimes is that sometimes he would hesitate to take the shot. You know, sometimes the three would be there, and he would hesitate and not take the jump. But that was really Grimes' issue. Josh Hart, I mean, when he's at the three-point line, he doesn't take the shot often, but that's because he's not confident in his jump. I feel like if he gets more confidence in his jump, he would take those threes more often. At least he would at least shoot the ball. But with Grimes, Grimes doesn't. Grimes does not have a broken jump shot. I, Josh Hart has a broken jump shot. No, Josh like, Hart has a broken jump shot. Help. Grimes had to have is having a down year offensively, but uh, it, it was a little jokey joke. It was a little tongue in cheek. It, 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 it was not as good as last year. It wasn't as good as last year. And he did trade with JJ Reddy. That's all I'm really saying. But it's not broken. Josh Hart, his joint is it? Yeah. Yeah, his not, joint is broken. It's broken. It's it's old old school. OD broken. All right. Salute to the chat. Salute to the chat. Marshall Elta's hesitation skills kills. Yeah, he hesitates all the time. He hesitates all the time. And that's gonna be important in the playoffs. He needs to not be scared and take that shot when the shot is given to him. Shout out to Ann Grill, shout out to Marshall L. Shout out to We Served the 100 People. Shout out to Prezi, the boss, who calls him Josh Robin. Yeah, man, that's a, that's an apropos name. Josh Robin, for sure. Shout out to Fritz, Isaiah Ramos, Marshall L. Everybody, everybody else is rocking the KOT show. If you're liking the show, hit that like and subscribe button. And thank you. Thank you for the people who are sharing the show. I'm noticing new people in the chat and rock with us. Uh, so if you're new in the chat, let me know too. I'll shout you out and let KLT fan know you're in the building. And you know, don't, don't be shy. Keep chatting the chat. We can read your stuff. We have something to say. We we'll, we'll uh, acknowledge you. But also, we also have a Discord link too. So if you wanna if you wanna chat, uh, click that Discord link. There's a Discord link. I should put it in the chat right now. Thank you. Speak your piece about the Knicks. And talk live with the KOT show and the crew. All right. All right. This show could be a short show, man, because it's the Pistons, man. It's the Pistons. Well, like, what else do you want? You supposed to beat the Pistons. But I still want to, I still want to highlight a couple of other things. The passing has been immaculate. Defense is still there. I still I still feel like Hartenstein has a big was has been a big for us. His passing, the backdoor passing has been great pause. <laughs> <laughs> I like I just like what I've seen from Josh Hart in general. I liked what I've seen from Precious Achua as well. And um Bojan, I mean he got a couple of buckets. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't get a couple of buckets. Yeah, he did. He's just still making me look stupid though. <laughs> <laughs> I need my dad to come around, man. I really do. He's getting he's getting some wide open looks. He just needs to knock him down. Yeah, the broadcast said something interesting. I think about they said he has to adjust to not playing starters minutes like he's used to and getting a roll off the bench. I was like, maybe that could be what it is. He's just trying to find that rhythm. I'm um, being off the bench because when you're a starter, you can kind of shoot your way into a rhythm. But when you're coming from the bench, you just got to You got your five or 10 minutes. You got to make it happen. But we all know Tibbs is not giving you no more minutes if you can't play defense. So he needs to he needs to play defense and he can stay on the floor a little bit longer to figure it out. That's the yeah. secret, Bojan, if you didn't know. 
play more depth. defense, stay yeah. on the floor longer. Yeah. You can figure it out. If you yeah, don't definitely. know who to ask, ask Deuce McBride. All right. <laughs> No, all I wanted to say was like, it's definitely the secret, but it would definitely help if you if you would actually have more of offensive production because if he would produce more on offense, it would at least give Thibs, you know, it would actually give Thibs a reason to keep him on the court if he would just produce more offensively. So it's like, all right, you know, if he's not going to produce offensively, then he's useless because defensively he struggles. So to yeah, he, he needs to he needs to show effort on defense, but at the same time, it's like. At least give yourself a reason to stay on the court by at least scoring the bucket when you're when you're wide open for three. Like don't miss those shots. At least knock them down. Oh uh, yeah, not nah, for sure. I agree. I agree. And you, you would think a guy who shoots forty percent from the three would actually knock them down with more regularity than what he has, <laughs> especially when he's he has like you said he has wide open shots, and it's crazy. Like he's he he's not just missing some shots. I feel like he airballs once a game. <laughs> he air, he shoots an air ball from the corner at least once a game and wide open shots too. Yep. It, it, it's crazy. I kind of feel like when he's open and he's wide open, he almost gets in his head and kind of just panics and then throws up whatever. And then he'll throw up a shot where I feel like he shouldn't be shooting and it goes straight in. I just I don't understand it. I just don't. I don't understand it. I don't understand it, but. I'm hoping he gets it together, but he's running out of time. And <laughs> well, maybe he's not. I don't know. We, we I'm kind of concerned about these Knicks, man. We still we still haven't had Randall back yet. We still OG. There has been, what's the news? There's news today from Tom Thibodeau that said OG Ananobi is doing better. But he's still kind, he's still. Going through what's the phrase that they use, Ryan G? Um, they said uh, the elbow inflammation that still needs to calm down. That's what he said. Right. So it's, it's been a few games and we still haven't had OG Ananobi. Julius Randle still hasn't progressed to contact as of yet. He's still kind of just practicing and doing control contact. So I'm still waiting for these other guys to get back and I'm getting a little worried, man. I'm I'm, I'm getting a little bit worried. It's, it's seeming like I feel like Mitch is going to beat everybody else back. <laughs> That's what it's looking like. It's looking like Mitch is going to beat everybody else back. And by the time he gets back, it's looking like Hartenstein is, is ready to go. Because one of the good things about today's game was not only Hartenstein's production and his passing and his defense. It's, it seems like he's able to stay on the floor longer. Um, I'm not sure how many minutes he got today. How many minutes? 24 minutes. So it's actually a little less than what he's used to playing. Yeah, I think he got, I think it's only because they were, they were winning by, by so much, but I saw a, a tweet from Fred Katz that said that he played like 15 straight minutes or 12 straight minutes for the first time since he's been back. Um, and he usually gets taken out. A little bit sooner for shorter stints. So the fact that he's played a longer stint is a positive sign for us. So it seems like the Knicks are starting to ramp up his his minutes or are trying to ramp up his minutes or at least the length of minutes he's plays. So you might start to see him play even more minutes at that center position as he gets healthier. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for Hartenstein and, and those. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else have anything to add today? Can we make this a short, short post game? No, it's fun, man. It's it's great that the Knits are finally at that point where when we play a really bad team, we smack the hell out of them. That's For so long, that wasn't the case. And I re- saw a note, so I'm not going to try to quote it directly, but I read that we have one of the highest percentages in the NBA in winning a game when we're leading in the first half, and we have one of the highest percentage of winning a game against teams 500 or below. So that's that's Tom Thibodeau for you. Yeah. When the Knicks go in a double digit lead, we don't relinquish the league. We win those games and we did it once again today. And a lot of that has to do with the type of defense we play. We we hang our hat on defense. It makes it really tough for teams to actually get momentum and overtake us. Even if they tie us, they kind of have to use all their energy to to even tie us because of the type of defense that we play. So Shout out to these Knicks who are very disciplined defensively. 
And on top of that, when you have a, a closer like Jalen Brunson, who gave us a whole hum 28 points tonight, it makes it even <laughs> harder. <laughs> Yo, right. I, I'm mad at myself. God, I didn't even talk about Jalen Brunson. He had 28 points. <laughs> but it's like, it's funny because we didn't even really need his 28 points, really. I mean, we could have. It was nice to have. It was just nice to have. I felt like he was struggling in the first half. He came on in the third quarter. Um, but he could have just as easily passed it out and everybody else could have taken over and we could have still won this game because the way the team was just humming, I feel like wherever the ball was going was where we were going to score. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just getting, I'm just getting too used to this greatness. And I'm, mad, I'm mad at myself for almost going through the whole show without mentioning, hey, Jalen Brunson had 28 points today. <laughs> Yeah, typically, I remember getting that way in like year three or four of Mello, where you were just so used to him dropping 25 in a game. Brunson, it happened in the first year and a half of him being here. You're already like, oh, 28. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fifth league scorer in the NBA. Boring. <laughs> Averaging 30 a game. <laughs> Whatever. Like I'm mad at myself because we were begging for this for years, and now we at this. This is how this is how the BS happens, man. This is how the BS happens. You, you take some of this stuff for granted, man. You just take some of this stuff for granted sometimes. How reliable he just is, and how much he's just hitting threes in people's face and going to the line, and it's crazy. Shout out to Jalen Brunson. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah, and also had team leading plus thirty seven tonight. So. Crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. Absolutely crazy. And doing a lot better job picking his spots. First half, very content, just setting up his teammates and enforce anything at all. Um, we had, I think, 11, 10 or 11 assists in that first quarter. It was something ridiculous in that first quarter. And then really just put his stamp on the game in the third. I, I kind of feel like that third quarter was just, was just, let me get back in rhythm. <laughs> because that first half, the way he was shooting, he just was, it seemed like he was missing very easy shots, kind of like that Nets game. So I feel like the third quarter was just like, you know what, let me just get back in rhythm. I can hit, I can hit these floaters. I can make these layups. I can do this in my sleep. Cool, I'm back in rhythm. All right, now get the ball to Dante again. <laughs> like, that's the way I saw the game anyway. So yeah, shout out to Jalen Brunson. And once again, shout out to Deuce McBride too who seemed very upset that he didn't play a full 48 minutes today. He got taken out of the game, looked a little grumpy, got taken out of the game, got then put right back in the game, and then had the nerve to embarrass Sasser, is that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's my old pick. That's my old pick. I'm gonna I'm start off early. My old pick is when Miles, when Deuce McBride was out of bounds and throws a ball off the back of Sasser, only to catch it and make the layup. Oh, that's my old pick. <laughs> oh man. All right. But yo, I got it. That's it. I got nothing else. We got the next game. Next game up. Raptors on Wednesday. Raptors on Wednesday. Next game up is Raptors on Wednesday. Not only that, we have the Cavs. Let's see. The Knicks schedule for the next few games. We have the Knicks schedule and the Cavs schedule. We got some winnable games. As of today, we're still fourth. We're a half game behind the Cavs. Next game we have is against the Raptors, who lost 10 straight. They're just getting uh, IQ and RJ back. So this should be a, a, a winnable game for sure. Then we have the Spurs up next. Then it gets a little bit serious. Then we got OKC. And I feel like we can beat OKC. We barely lost to them. We barely lost to them before. I hope we have Mitch Robinson and OG Ananobi back. That would be ideal for me to play uh, when we face at OKC. But I think we can beat them. That's going to be our first challenging game so far in the last in the last few days. So I had that game circled for sure. And as for the Cavs, 
They're half game in front of us. Like I said earlier, they had the Hornets. They just beat the Hornets. The Hornets back to back. Jesus. <laughs> Hornets back to back is just crazy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hornets back to back. Adam Silver. Bruh. Hate you. <laughs> you can give them a freebie right now. Oh, there. my gosh. Yep. But, but then they have the 76ers. Mm, they kind of they scrappy, they scrappy. Then the Nuggets, we can just we can just melt that L in. Yeah, that's on the road to Endeavor. Yeah, yeah L. we can just <laughs> melt that in. Mail it up. Then the Jazz, then the Suns, then the Lakers. They they got a West Coast trip too. Oh Ooh. yeah, that Lakers Clippers, that Suns Lakers Clippers might be you know, that might be something to work to to walk work through with them. So this yeah. possibility we can make up some ground right here and up a third. It would be great to have our guys back when that's happening. But we will see what happens because we have OKC. Then we have the Heat. Oh, I hate playing the Heat. Me too. Yeah, and that's in Miami. Ugh. Julius Randle, you can skip that game even if you're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Brunson too. That's a fact. Yo, Shake Milton starting. For real, I, I don't care. <laughs> don't even care. You went all the way. Sh shake, sh uh, Jacob, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie Brown. Brown. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Charlie Brown, completely. We can all sit. I don't Yo, care. I'll, I'll the take the L for that game because I, <laughs> I'm not playing. It's, Yo, do you, can you imagine playing Miami now, where they're playing when they're calling less fouls? Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, we might as well load up Diakite too. Who who else? Dwayne Washington. <laughs> That's a fact. Yo, anybody yeah, want a 10 day in the chat? Like <laughs> Taj Gibson. Yeah, Taj, yo, Taj, bring old man River. Yeah, bring him back too. <laughs> Elford oh, Payton. Elford, yeah, let's do it. He's in the Yo, G League somewhere. Yo, he ain't somewhere. healthy though because we ain't see him tonight against so um, because he's he's with the Pistons right now and we ain't see him tonight. So my man must be hurt too. Yo, you know what's funny? I thought I thought I thought uh, Jericho Sims when I I thought Jericho Sims was steroid Jacob Toppin for a good three minutes for when real, he ran down the door. <laughs> I saw the braids. I was like, Jacob got he's in the gym. What the? What's happening? With you? He looked a little tall. <laughs> then I look, they zoomed in. I was like, wait a minute, that's Jericho. <laughs> Yo, those those Jericho's braids, man. He that, he made that man look completely different. Facts. I guess he found Deuce's old stylist and went to town. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's all I got to cover, though. Let's get to it, man. It's that time of the show. You already know what it is. It's time for the bruh. the bro picks. Bro picks are usually the worst players of the game. Uh, sometimes it's not even just this game. It could be any game. And sometimes it could be, it doesn't have to be any game. It could just be something stupid, something dumb, something idiotic that you just want to point out and say, this is stupid. This is dumb. So I'm giving that Bruh. to that situation. So Ryan G, I already know you got 30 bro picks loaded up in the clip, but you got my brother. First bro pick goes to Jabari Smith and Chris Dunn for the fight they had the other day, Rockets versus the Jazz, because I don't know what happened, but things got kind of chippy. Chris Dunn had Jab Chris Dunn had Jabari Smith by his jersey, was pulling it and grabbing it. Then all of a sudden, they just started, they just started throwing fists at each other. And then what happens is that they got split up, and they got ejected from the game, and they both got a game suspension for throwing fists. Damn. Bruh. Oh, we back to old school. We back to the 90s now. We just throwing fists. <laughs> Not the right. fake, like, run up, shove you, then run behind, and hold me back type of deal. Like Kevin Garnett used to do. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Throwing <laughs> hands. Throwing two pieces like Chris Childs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next bro pick goes to Boyan Bogdanovic because there was a play tonight and I was like, nah, this man need a bra. This man needs to get a bra. Matter of fact, it could be a whose man's. Whose man's is this? <laughs> my guy, 
<laughs> will drive into the basket. And I think McBride was in the corner wide open for three. And my man was like, ah, you know, mix up by 20. I'm going to get a little fancy. So my man drove, drove to the basket, saw McBride in the corner, and was like, you know what, I'm going to do one of them and one passes. My man no looked behind the head pass. It goes straight out of bounds. Bruh. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you were not joking, bro. Like, <laughs> that was not your move. He tried it. He really did try it. Yeah, he Dollar tried store it. joker. <laughs> Dollar store joker, yeah. And she right. water water joker. <laughs> tried it and hardly failed. That's a fact. Next broad pick goes to Jonte Porter on the Toronto Raptors. Because I don't know if you heard the news, but my guy is being hemmed up for possibly illegal prop betting in in sports because and here's a story by ESPN this is what ESPN is reporting right now in the game on January 26 against the LA Clippers there was increased betting interest on the under for Porter's props which for the night were set at five, around 5.5 points 4.5 rebounds and 1.5 assists there was also an over under for Porter's made three points which was 0.5 that night, Porter played just four minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said was a re-aggravation of an eye injury he'd suffered oh. in a game against the Memphis Grizzlies. He did not score against the Clippers, had three rebounds and one assist, and did not attempt the three, meaning the under hit on all the, of the props. The next day, as part of a daily report to users on betting results, DraftKings Sportsbook reported that the under on Porter's three-pointers was the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player props. For oh. the game. And then just two days later, he plays 19 minutes, scores 12 points with seven rebounds and three assists. And then this is not the craziest. This is not the craziest thing about it. So, you know, we'll just tweeting about, you know, the reports that's coming out, etc. So now... They say that at least one other U.S. sports book detected unusual betting interest on Porter props in games in question. A sportsbook industry source told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts, upwards of 10K and 20K, Damn. in January game against the Clippers. Well, all his boys. <laughs> Yo, I'm saying that next game. <laughs> Damn. Bruh. Surprised that it's taking this long to have a scandal because I feel like there's going to be more to come. I'm just, I'm just saying, facts, it's just too easy, it's too accessible. It's is there. This is going to be through every sport, not even just basketball, through every sport. You're going to hear something, you're going to hear more and more about it. What's the league? That's the thing, though. Like, what do you do? What's the league gonna do? Because it's gonna bring them money. They want to. They want a piece of that money. Like, how do you regulate that? Do you do you take money out the player's pocket for doing stuff like that? Like, that's that seems like some new CBA type of stuff. They might have to discuss later. Yeah. Facts. Next broad pick, the refs for this Knicks versus Pistons game because y'all took away a legit three. From Dante DiVincenzo, and he had to Bruh. take another three to regain that record. So he ended the game with 11 threes, so he still got the record. But my guy should have had 12 threes tonight. But since the refs want to be petty and and not have and not let my guy be great, they decided to take away the three. And then when you see the replay, his heel was above mm -hmm. the um out of bounds, the out of bounds boundary when he took the three. I think one of the refs. Was like Evan Fournier's cousin or something. That's that's my only thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way in hell you watched the replay, saw the heel floating over the line, and said, "Nah, we gonna take it away." Like y'all hate it. Facts. It is. And real. then my last bro pick. Come on, bro. <laughs> Lee Lee pretty much gave gave it away earlier in the show. Take that. My take last that, bro that. pick goes to. P. Diddy, because authorities raided his house, his houses, 
in Los Angeles, Miami, and New York because of a sex trafficking ring that he's possibly a part of. And then on top of that, my man's is nowhere to be found. And then on top of that, they said that his private jet was found in a Caribbean country. So, my, so not only is my so not only was my man aware that he was about to be hemmed up, but he leaves the country and leaves his kids back for his kids to be arrested by the authorities. Whose man Bruh. is this? <laughs> Crazy, son. Yo, he out there, Russell Simmons, chilling. That's what he's. <laughs> yep. That's exactly he's like, oh, word? Is a case y'all building a case against me? I'm out. <laughs> Facts. I am out. That's crazy. Your kids arrested? That's crazy. It's a damn shame. Damn shame. Damn. <laughs> Cambodian breast milk. <laughs> 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 oh, man. <clears throat> oh man, that's all right. Any bro picks? Any bro picks, Lee? I just got one. Uh, Monty Williams. I believe he's the highest paid coach in the NBA right now, and he's doing a historically David Fisdale level job in Detroit. And tonight he had uh, a quote, the audacity, a quote that he didn't care or want to talk about Josh Hart. Basically, insinua- I mean, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, insinuating that DiVincenzo's threes were <clears throat> outside of a competitive spirit, that he was stat padding and just trying to get his numbers, which maybe that might have happened or not. But Josh Hart had a hilarious retort, and he said if he didn't want to be part of his story, <laughs> he should have told his guys to play better defense. <laughs> I found <laughs> Josh Hart, he had quadruple double because he, he, he just marked him with the roast, too. Uh, that's the Uber. That's the Uber. That's the Uber. Ronnie Williams, what a bum. And then I have a ooh pick. Since we didn't get a chance to talk too much about Jalen Brunson, I want to put his greatness in perspective. Saw a great stat today on drives, ISOs, and post ups that touched the paint and led directly to a score. Brunson's fourth in the NBA. First is Luda Doncic, 415 total of those. Second is Zion Williamson. He's playing with the top 10 player this year with 373. Third is Giannis with 368. And then right below, 366. Two less of those scores than Giannis is Jalen Brunson with 366. Oh, come on about, now. Think about getting into the paint and everything Giannis's force of nature, physically, athletically, uh, his length, his size, his speed, all of that. IQ. All of that combined, three three hundred sixty-eight ISOs, post touches, or drives. Brunson only two less. Incredible feat, Jalen Brunson, best point guard in the NBA. Yeah, best guard, best 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 point guard in the NBA. Oh man, oh man. Also, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't have this queued up. I'm mad at myself. I'm so mad at myself. I'm so, I'm mad at myself because also down bad right now. Everybody go for the year. Tyrese Halliburton. If Tyrese Halliburton has not been playing well all year. I mean, has not been playing well since he's been back. And I had the stats. Damn it. I wish I had it queued up. I just thought about it just now. Let me see if I can get to it real quick. But Tyrese Halliburton is averaging... As of now, 16.4 points per game, <laughs> shooting 44% from the field and 24% from three since yeah. the All Star break. Bruh. Balling from grace. Balling from grace. So I need everybody to give Wally Zerbiak an apology, right? <laughs> because <laughs> he caught so much. For talking about how Jalen Brunson is nicer. And he ended up being right. I'm just saying, I stand with Wally Zerbiak. I stood with him last year. I stand with him this year. Wally, you okay with me? And I, if I'm with you, Wally, I'm going to Indiana with my head up high with the Brunson jersey. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Matter of fact, Ryan G, you can do it for him because I know Ryan G's in Indiana right now. Oh yeah, yo, yeah. I've, I've already, I've already been around. I've already been around Indianapolis with our Knicks jersey yeah. on. Yeah, they already know. They already know what I said. Yeah, I need you to crip walk in Indianapolis with your brother's <laughs> jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need you to do. All right. <laughs> That's my bro. Or ooh, however you want to look at it. Ooh. Yo, so who's you guys? Y'all oh I came in late. 69 in the chat. Shout out to the 69 people in the chat. Oh. Shout out to JT Reddick. Shout out to We Served. 100 people. Shout out to Jean Marc Marshall Elix Nation TV. Everybody else is rocking with the KOC KOT show. If you like the show, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're new, I'll shout you out too. If you're new, I'll just let me know. Just say hey, new. And thank you guys for sharing. The sharing has been helping. It's been increasing the 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 eyes on the channel so i appreciate you guys sharing the channel uh putting links on reddit putting links on twitter putting links on facebook i appreciate you guys for linking uh the kot show and other social spaces and bringing people here to enjoy the show and enjoy the post games with us so i appreciate you guys shout out to stanley man yo stanley i haven't seen you live on here i've seen you in the comments i haven't seen you live on here Stanley Man said, let's get JR, OG, and Mitch back healthy just before the playoffs. We will go on a run and meet the Boston for the Eastern Conference title. Yeah, we run out, out of time, man. How many games do we have left? Like 12? Uh, let's see. We have a total of one. Let's see. We got... He has like 11 games left. 11 games left. Raptors, Spurs, Thunder. Heat, Kings, Bulls, Bucks, Bulls, Celtics, Nets, Bulls again. Yeah, it's like eleven games left. Eleven, yeah. That's like that's like, like two weeks. Pretty much. We got two weeks of basketball left, fellas. We got two weeks of basketball left, so we need people to start coming back. <laughs> Facts. We need people to start coming back. Like that's not a lot of time. You it takes six it takes six games for Julius Randle to get into rhythm. I hope. I mean, his health is more important though. His health is more important. I'd rather him be healthy than try and get in rhythm with a bad shoulder and re-injure anything. Facts. But we need to get some players back so we can catch a rhythm in the playoffs. For sure. All right. And um shoot, maybe even get this 50 burger. Who knows? I don't know. Yo, what? Maybe even Dude, get this let's Bigby go. Burger. Let's go. Maybe even get how many wins we got? 43? Fire up the grill. Yeah, Nick gotta go. Nick gotta, gotta go seven and four the rest of the way. Seven and four? Yeah. Give me seven four. Bulls one. Nets two. <laughs> Bulls three. <laughs> oh, well, you played the Bulls three times? Okay, that's half. That's, that's half right there. That's three. Four, five, king, six. I can see a 50. I can definitely see a 50. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Pistons is one for sure. Pistons is one. Spurs is two. Kings, three. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I see a bunch of. These seven oh, under five hundred teams on our list on our on our on our radar. I can definitely see a fifty burger, and then beat a couple of these other teams. You might have a fifty two burger in here. Might have a fifty two burger. Might have a fifty-two burger. <laughs> but yeah, well, man, got players coming back healthy. It's possible. It's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. Especially if we come back healthy. Hopefully, we get some guys healthy so we can start to make a real run and get some more synergy before the playoffs. All right, but that's all, yo. Yo, thank you guys for watching. Lee, let them know where you can find you, sir. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Lee Escobedo, L E E E S C O B E D O, or search the hashtag bar, hashtag bum. You'll see me fighting with Ari from Manhattan or State from Harlem. Uh, today's book club is um, in honor of Ebony, who couldn't be here. Her intuition and knowledge of a game made me get on eBay. I bought basketball offense source book. It's offensive play calling and the history of the NBA of offense on college. 
an NBA level with interviews and uh, touchstones from coaches like Chuck Daly, Clarence Bidhouse Gaines, Bill Sharman, Adolph Rupp, John Wooden, all of them talking about the evolution of a game since they started, um, breaking down offensive sets so that all of us can become better watchers and better thinkers when we're viewing the game. I don't have the intuition of playing it, so it's not, it doesn't resonate in me the same way it does with her, but I love to read. So I thought this would be a good way for me to brush up on my play calling knowledge. So I want to dedicate my book club to Ebony for always inspiring me to think and, and see the game at a higher level. Nice, nice, nice. Shout out to Ebony. Yo, I was going, I need to go through that rabbit hole again. I was going through a rabbit hole of um, offensive play going, calling last year with uh, YouTube channels. <laughs> I'm a visual, so it's like, of course, you know, you want to know the play calls, but when I see, oh, two men go here, you screen the screener, and you, like, oh, that, that's how I kind of learn, but salute to you, and thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, enough, this book is written by Jerry Cross, rest in peace, the man who built the Chicago Bulls dynasty. He was the one that collected all of these interviews and talked to all the coaches to put this book together. So, yeah, I mean, I think defense is something as a Knit fan, we all know about defense. We, we have, a, I think, a pretty rich understanding of it because our, our franchise is so synonymous with it, You're going back all the way to the championship days. Offense, I think I know less about. So I just want to brush up before the playoffs start so I can be, be more aware of what I'm watching on the court. Got you, got you. All right, all right, that's what's up. All right, Ryan G, let her know they can find you, sir. You can find me on Twitter at RyanTKOT. You, you can also find me on Instagram at Sir G is Chillin'. Sir G is Chillin'. That's S I R G is C H I L L I N. All right. All right. Oh, you can find us at the KOT Show on Twitter, the Naked Time Show on Instagram, and the Naked Time Show on Facebook as well. Yo, yo you know what's crazy, guys? So KOT has like an Etsy shop that I forgot I even had up. <laughs> and then I looked up, I was like, you got two orders. I was like, huh? <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I got two orders. I looked up two different people bought two Ron Baker shirts. Wow. <laughs> wow. Damn. Wow. To this it was Ron day, Baker and his wife. <laughs> till this day, out of all the shirts that I've made, the most popular shirt has been the Ron Baker shirt. It was like KP and Ron Baker, and then I think Ron Baker overtook. <laughs> former Nick Great Ron Baker. Former Nick Great. <laughs> it's funny because it's like a picture with him with like a mask on. Like I had to do like do your because you know when Anthony Davis is dunked on and hit him in the face. Yeah. So I had to picture him smiling with the mask on. It's great. But it's on Etsy. So I, I, I just sold four like this week. Kind of crazy. But <laughs> shout out to those guys who bought the, the Ron Baker shot maker shirt. All right. This is you. <laughs> All right, that is the show. <laughs> you know, we serve eight hundred people. You don't, you don't cop one. Yo, head to the yo, yo head to the KOT Etsy page. It's up there, man. <laughs> Go to Etsy the Nick Top Show. Get the Ron Baker shirt. There's <laughs> also the Fizz, the Fizzdale shirts there too. Take that for that. My yeah, ain't no one buy that. Yeah, ain't no one buy that. The, the, <laughs> those are gonna stay on the show. Yo, some people might buy that. Yo, out of nostalgia. Somebody, <laughs> just because it's funny, man. <laughs> Yeah, the nostalgia of Nick's being four. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! I I almost forgot. I wanted to say this. So I can't remember who posted on Twitter, but I saw a great meme. Someone had two photos. The first was when the Nets were getting blown out by yes, thirty. Yeah, I'm about to say that. I love it. And the other side is, is the Nets up by thirty on Detroit, and Tibbs is scowling. He's still angry as hell. I was like, damn, I love I love this team. Man. Yeah, yeah I was it the team. I think was it the Strickland? I might have been a Strickland. Maybe it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, shout out to the Strickland. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that was exactly and, the great, and the great thing about Dips too is that halftime, Nick's up by 17. And my guy's still going up, going up to the ref, letting her hear it. And you saw the eye mm -hmm. that the ref gave him too? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that eye was crazy. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, yo, why is Dips going so hard up by 25? So crazy. Oh, man. Yeah. That's the show, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And shout out to you guys. Y'all coming in the chat late. Shout out to Drip Moore. I see you. Dimitri, I see you. Everybody, Brooklyn Butch coming in late. I see you. But we out of here, man. So you guys already know the drill. As always. Shout out to World Wide West. Everywhere we go, we leave a worldwide mess. Some mess out here in these Knicks YouTube streets. That's the show. We out of here. We'll see you in the next game.
Peace. Here's a three. Bang! 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 Bang!